Hallelujah. You know, um, just a few recaps from something John said on Sunday. He was talking about, is the blood of Jesus enough? You know, it's so powerful, isn't it? Is the blood of Jesus enough? And it is enough. And then he did it all for us. And so often we forget or talk like it's not done. And we're begging God and asking God when he did it all for us. And it's up to us now to walk in faith and to learn what he's given us. Amen. You know how um, um, F.F. Bosworth says, faith begins where the word of God is known. And you have to know God to really believe in him. How can you believe that he's your healer if you've never read the word that says, by my stripes, by his stripes you were healed? How can you believe he wants to protect you if you haven't ever read Psalm 91? How can you believe in a Savior that died to give everything to you, to, to forgive your sins and heal your diseases and redeem your life from destruction and crown you with loving kindness and tender mercy and fill your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. If you've never read Psalm 103. Amen. What the more we know God, the more our faith grows. And, and because that's how we build our faith. You have to know someone to trust them. Amen. And so we have to know our Lord to trust, to trust him. And to truly be able to put our faith in him. And then um, he was talking about John 10.10, which we talked about. Um, I'm going to do a few recaps from Bible study on, on Monday also. We're warriors, but John 10.10. 10. Let's just turn there and start there as our, our verse. <coughs> I'm going back here behind Acts. Don't ask me why. <laughs> John 10.10. 10. I mean in front of Acts. We all know this by heart. Let's start at nine. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. And I love that because that means you're being nourished, right? You're finding pasture, everything that's good for you. You're finding and you're being nourished. You're being filled. You're being, you're having sustenance. Amen. The thief comes, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy I have come that they have life. They might have life and have that life more abundantly. Have it to the full. Are these lights on the fullest? Can I have these? Uh, I do, yeah. Thank yeah. you. It's, uh, I want to read some of this gray part. And it's pretty gray. So, I, Anyway, and you know, I was, I was reading the Oral Roberts here, and it says, he said, oh, that's better. Thank you. And there's some back there. He says, Jesus said he came to give life. Not just ordinary existence, but life in fullness, abundance, and prosperity. And prosperity in, in, um, in the word is the real possibility of health for your total being, body, mind, emotions, relationships, and material needs being met. Above all, his prosperity means eternal life. So it's prosperity. Prosperity is a complete prosperity. And then John's been teaching on that a lot on Sundays. And his prosperity is a full life. It's fullness in every area of your life. And God doesn't want us lacking in anything. He doesn't want us lacking in our emotions. He doesn't want us mentally lacking. Uh, and, you know, when you draw close to him in the spirit, he starts to fill all those areas. Amen. We had someone, John discipled him. He's talked about him years and years ago named Stoney. And he couldn't read. And he was a... Um, he had lived on skid row quite a bit and drug addict, alcoholic. When John started discipling him, he just did it with the word of God. And that's, and he learned to read by the Bible mm. and God just taught him to read. And he read that Bible constantly and he was sharing the word with everybody he could meet. Mm -hmm. He became this awesome. He was an amazing guy. I mean, he was a fighter. So he turned that fighting <laughs> with the word and was like, I'm going to, I'm going to preach. He was bold. Amen. He was, he could have been scary. He was scary before, <laughs> but he was scary, but he was long hair, very good looking, strong guy. And then when he loved, when he'd come over because he was having trouble because he wanted to beat up somebody, you know, or wanted this or that, he would just fall on his knees and you pray for him and he'd weep and cry and repent oh. and the, the spirit would fill him it was so mighty oh. that's our god 
Amen? Yeah. That's transformation of a person. And that's what he wants for all of us. And he wants that for those people that we sometimes tend to look at and see and think, oh, hopeless. That's never hopeless. Amen? Amen. I mean, if someone had seen Stoney on Skid Row, I mean, he should have died, the things he would do, right? Drinking so much yeah. whiskey drugs. with drugs, yeah. mixing it, all this stuff. Mm. And they would have looked at him and said, that's a hopeless situation. I'll go talk to someone else. But someone loved him enough to pray for him, and somehow he got out of that situation. He ended up being head of the camp, uh, camp of seat. What's it called? The Boy Scout, Girl Scout camp way up in... Yeah. And uh, what's it called? Placido. Placido, yeah. That was years ago, before the earthquake. The 91, 92. Anyway, earthquakes chased him away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, uh, but if someone would have seen him back then, they wouldn't have thought it possible. Amen. But with God, nothing is impossible. And we need to look at people and have compassion like Jesus did and pray for them and love them and give to them. You know, we don't have to sit there and judge. I'm not going to give to this person. They have tattoos and their nose rings and, you know, and don't judge, give and love. Amen. Let God do the fixing. <laughs> you know, share the love of Jesus with them. And some people I was listening to someone and they were saying this fella came into church and you know we've had people come to church like this and we did love them uh you know all tattooed and earrings and hair sticking up and all black and you know just scary looking and she went right up and just hugged him with sincere love and it changed his life he said no one has ever loved me it changed his life. He turned his life around. Started serving the Lord in the ministry or something. From one act of love and kindness, sincerely, and sincerely, because it's the love of Jesus in us that loves people. Amen. So anyway, I'm crying again. <laughs> um, but you know, when when we're reading here in John 10:10. And Oral Roberts has a seed phase thing in here. And this is Jack Hayford's Bible. But um, so G God, Jesus, he came to give us life, right? And on the other hand, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. And I love the, what Oral Roberts said. He said, the line is clearly drawn, isn't it? A clear line. On one side is God with his goodness, life, life and plenty of all that is necessary for life and godliness. And of course, look at uh, 2 Peter 1, 3, you know, where he's given us everything we need for life and godliness through knowledge of the word, amen, and his promises. And then on the other side of this line is the enemy of our souls who comes to rob us of God's blessings, to oppress our bodies through disease and accident and to destroy everything that we love and hold dear. That's our line, right? The line is drawn. And all through the word, you know, God talks about life and death, blessing and cursing, healed, sickness, abundance, lack, or abundance and the devil robbing everything from you, right? Right, wrong. And there's such a clear line. There's no gray area. There's no maybe a little bit of this or that. It's clear. And if you see that, you'll know that all good things come from God, the Father above, amen? And all bad stuff comes from the devil. Anything that's not to do with life and godliness is robbing your life, right? Right. You know, enough sickness leads to death. Enough depression leads to death. Enough of anything bad of the devil, even if it starts with one little thing, discouragement, like we talked about, and then depression, and then whatever, the snakes come in, right? Because we grumble and complain and murmur. And those things slither into our lives and start to, start to destroy us. So we can't ever allow, we always have to keep on this side. God's line is clear. The line is set. And stay on the God side of the line. And don't allow this stuff to creep in that's anti-God. There's there, And it's very clear. You look in the Word and it's very clear. Um, let's see. Your first step toward experiencing full biblical prosperity is to believe that it is God's highest desire for you. 
the next step is to line up your your highest desire with his do you have that highest desire highest desire to attain all that god has given you do you have that highest desire that should be our highest desire if jesus died to give this he, he sacrificed his life for our our salvation for our healing for our to free us from sin and destruction break every chain amen we need to line our life up with his desire for us because he was willing to die for us and he did and he's not going to die again he already did it and we have to receive all that he's given us amen um let's see so and we talked about um in word warriors that now is the time we believe we have to believe now and john was talking about that on sunday too use your faith while you are well and strong now is the time to build your faith you don't wait till you're down in the dumps and in the swamp and in the quicksand to all of a sudden start building your faith you're strong now build speak the word of god over your life over your family you build you train now for your health your finances your children your family that's what we have to do now. And, you know, praise God, we are strong, aren't we? And we're getting stronger and stronger because we're filling ourselves with the word and so that we can go out and touch other people's lives. And, and if we're going to touch other people, we need to keep our faith strong. Amen. Right. And now is the time to do that. Um, I also was mentioning that prayer doesn't make faith work. Faith makes prayer work. Now, when I'm saying that prayer, I'm talking about praying, saying, oh, God, please do this. God, do that. God, do this. That's not that's not going to make your faith work. Faith makes prayer work. You speak the word of God. You pray the word of God. It builds your faith. Like Diana, we were saying on Monday, it builds your faith and you speak the word. You speak the word and your faith is growing. You pray the word. Mm -hmm. But the faith is what makes the prayer work. Amen. Right. So people that are always hoping for the future of something, just hoping, hoping is, is future. And hoping and praying is why people don't see their answers in their lives. We see it all the time where they don't ever get there because they're hoping. It's always out here, but faith is now. Amen. We have to take it now. Take our take it. We take the things that God's given us. We've received that. We say, thank you, Lord, because there's somebody out there taking it if you don't. And his name is the devil. Mm -hmm. And he's just trying to rob all those things all the time that Jesus died to give you because you're not receiving them. We are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> People aren't receiving them. We are receiving them. Amen. We're receiving all that Jesus died to give me, give us. Um, so faith is the substance of things hoped for. All right. Okay, then um, let's go over, turn over to 2 Timothy 2.15. I love the word. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. You know, God did it all for us, and then he gave us the book of everything we need to know. And then he just says, get in it, right? Learn it, grow. And not only does the word, is there a word that, that we can read, it's a word that's alive and powerful and that changes us at the same time. And it does what it says it will do. It's amazing. It's not just going to school and learning something that's useful to you. You are... You are you are putting in life in your body. You're putting in a live God word in you that accomplishes what it says it will. It brings the healing. It brings the protection. It brings because it's God's word and he cannot lie. And this is what he says about us and what he says he will do. He will. He will. He will. He says it all over. I will. So we have to receive it. Amen. Yeah. Two on the front row. Don't you smoking around? <laughs> We were talking about spiritual things. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> These front row Sorry. people, I tell you. Um, <laughs> you know, back to that line before we go to First Timothy or Second Timothy. Hold your place there. But you know what? I was listening to, uh, I was reading my devotion today. I think it was Faith to Faith. And I was equating a couple of these things. First of all, I was reading in, um, in Matthew where the angel came to Mary, right? And what does she say? 
he says you're going to have a baby and he's going to be Jesus. And she's saying, well, how's it going to happen? And he tells her and he goes, be it, she says, be it done unto me according to your word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that is so amazing for a young, probably 14-year-old girl to say, okay, be it done unto me according to your word. Yeah. And we have Jesus who died for us and gave us everything we need. We have his word. Can we say that? Can we learn to say that? Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. Your word says I'm healed. Be it done unto me according to my, your word. Your, yeah. says, your word says I am protected. Be it done unto me according to your word. I believe it. I will receive it. I will walk in it. I will, okay, go ahead. We're going to walk in it because that's what you said. If we'd have that attitude with, with what God has given us, that whatever it says, I'm going to receive it. Amen? I'm going to walk in it. And even if it's something so hard as that, you know, which was a great blessing also. Anyway, then this preacher, it was, it was Copeland, he said, anytime he has an impossible situation, talking about Abraham, you know, with, uh, without, um, you know, he didn't consider his body, right, that was too old or Sarah's body, but he was fully persuaded that God was able to do what he had promised. And he was saying that anytime he's got an impossible situation in his life, an impossible, you know, where you, you think, how is this ever going to work out? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to go on everyday television? How am I going to? And um, he draws a faith line. He says he first takes the word and he finds promises and he meditates on it. You read it, right, John? <laughs> and uh, draws the faith. He says he meditates on what the word says. He fills himself and speaks it and meditates on it and just drops faith in his heart. And then he says, okay, Lord, I'm drawing this line now and I'm stepping over it. And I will believe what you have said, right? Be it done unto me. Amen. I believe what you have said. He draws a line of faith and he declares it's done now. And he doesn't look back. Like John said on Sunday, when Lot and his wife were fleeing and she looked back and was imprisoned forever. <clears throat> so powerful. And so he doesn't look back. He's not, then we're not going to be anymore like the guy in James tossed to and fro with every you know, this, this problem and looking here, what about and what ifs. That's what we do, what ifs, right? Declared is done now. Give God praise and speak only as if the miracle has already happened. Turn your back on your problems. Keep your eyes on Jesus, on his promise, and that's what we do. That's very powerful for especially situations that you feel are hopeless. You don't feel they're hopeless, but like Abraham, how is this going to happen? But he was fully persuaded because God said it. We should be the same. Amen. All right, let's go over to Timothy now. Um, number 15, chapter uh, 1 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy, sorry, 2 Timothy 2.15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So diligent. Be diligent. Amen. Mm -hmm. and you know, as Christian, growth isn't automatic. Just like going to church, growth isn't automatic. I mean, you're raised in a good church, maybe, but growth's not automatic, is it? You have to be diligent. You have to study the word. You have to put it in your heart. And I was sharing how Copeland said, I was watching him, and he has all these tabs in his Bible, and he says, that's not my, my um, message. He goes, those are the healing scriptures tabs. And every day he takes, he feeds his faith on the healing scriptures. And he likes to put his eyes on it, so he flips from one to another and reads them aloud over his body. I'm thinking, we need to do that. If someone's been in the ministry for 60 years or whatever is doing that, we should be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Powerful. So I thought, I'm going to get some tabs because that's yeah. good. That's good. Because I have them here and there, but, you know, just flip in your Bible and you'll read them. It's a bulk order. A bulk order? A bulk order. Of tabs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you need a lot of tabs. Are those the healing scriptures? Are the healing scriptures? You name it. You name it. <laughs> Good job, honey. Those are the tabs we want. Bulk that order, okay? <laughs> you know, Caleb did not. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. You know, what Hayford says about Rightly dividing the word of truth. This is something that Jack Hayford says. He says, God's inspired word is the only conclusive source of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 
concerning, sorry, I have no light there. Concerning <laughs> ultimate treasures, realities, ultimate realities. Um, it's the only thing. God's inspired word is the only thing. And it's a gold mine of wisdom for our lives. Amen. And practical principles. This is what we have. Amen. And so, and the only way to healthy, balanced living is through the rightly dividing of God's word. And, you know, that just means you really learn it. And you don't just take one scripture out of context. There's always several that you've got to find to back it up. Because so often we read things and we take it one way. And that's really not the way it was meant necessarily. We've got to read and study and ask the Holy Spirit to show us. Amen? And it's fun with the different versions and everything. So that's one thing. Be diligent to show yourself approved, right? To God. And it's not like God is trying to approve you all the time. I mean, it's not like he's watching you and saying, I'm giving you an A, I'll give you a B, oh, that's a D minus. He doesn't do that, amen? I'm so thankful. <laughs> he's not grading us. He loves us. He says, good job. We're his kids. He sees us grow. But we want to walk approved by God. I mean, just we want to walk, just know that we're doing what he wants us to do, amen? He loves us no matter what. And a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. And then it says to shun, verse 16, and uh, profane idle habits, for they increase ungodliness. Um, and now let's go down to 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So many people say, oh, I'm just a little, you know, a wooden pot, right? <laughs> but it says we're not to be those. We are, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, but it doesn't mean we're dishonorable pots, right? We choose right here. It says, cleanse yourself from the latter, which is uh, the, the clay and the stubble and things like that of dishonor. He will be a vessel for honor then, sanctified and useful for the master's use, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And I was just looking at that, flee, another line. Flee from the youthful lust. You flee from them, run away, and pursue and chase toward righteousness and faith and love and peace right we're to chase after those things but flee from the other amen so those again draw that line you flee from those things you see them and you run away you say no and you chase after chase after righteousness you pursue it with everything you have but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife <laughs> Isn't that a good one? Mm -hmm. Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. Has ever been anybody ever have one of those? <laughs> no. <laughs> Which causes some strife. Yeah. And you know, you look after it and go, what was that all about? Stupid. <laughs> ignorant. Foolish. A foolish dispute. <laughs> yeah. I think that too. <laughs> You were there. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God will perhaps grant them repentance. So we're to be gentle, and we can train, we can teach people, we can correct them, but it's never judgmentally. You know, judging them. He just gives us a soft answer, gives us the right a word, uh, love. You know, just smile. Whatever it is the Lord shows you to do. You know, so I was thinking of. Um, well, then go to First Timothy six. This is similar. <clears throat> First Timothy six eleven. But you, O man of God. Now let's back up. Let's just start with 10. 
for the love of money is a, you know, I like this, is a root of all evil. There's other roots of evil, isn't there? Like pride and things like that. Love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And again, that's that sorrow that leads to death, right? That sorrow that is not godly. It doesn't lead to repentance. And it's the riches that have sorrow with them because they went away from the Lord. Amen. But then it says, but you, O man of God, O you, O woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Then it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. I love the, the, um, the verbs in this fight, pursue, amen. Mm -hmm. Lay hold. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Confess the good confession. We don't just make the good confession one time when we get saved. It's a good confession every moment of our lives. We've confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Every time you speak, are you confessing the good confession? Are you saying what Jesus did for you? Are you lining your speech up with what the word says because people are listening faith speaks and faith is heard right people can hear your faith or they can hear your discouragement and you know uh, um well i'll go i'll go to that after so we have to fight that good fight of faith we have to pursue these things these are steps that we need to take to grow amen, amen. and the next step is you know it says that you know, we're to be in Matthew 25, like make the tree good and its fruit will be good. Tree is bad. The fruit will be bad. Amen. We're to be good trees who bear good fruit. And we follow Jesus. We do what he asks. We love our Lord. We show, show this through loving people. Um, but you know, in Matthew 25, let's just go there now real quick and then we'll end. Well, this is, you know, Matthew 25. I'm going to talk just a little bit now about our service, about our ministries. You know, I'm excited because you've seen ministries rise up in the church. I'm seeing people putting their hand to the plow and yeah. ministering. It's really exciting. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about, although I'm speaking to the choir here because you guys are doing really good, <laughs> I think. Yeah. But um, Matthew 25, this is the sheep and the goats. It's a hard thing, isn't it, when you read it? Um, but I was reading uh, Jack Hayford. I think he said something about it. It doesn't mean necessarily that they lost their salvation, but they lost some, a lot of rewards or something, you know. But it says, uh, Come, you blessed my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you or visit you in prison? And the king said, Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you do this, did it to one of my brethren, you did this for me and to me. And that is a sobering scripture to me. But then I thought, now, who do you know in your life? That is there someone God's putting on your heart to minister to? Is there someone you know in prison that you could write a letter to? Is there an elderly person that could use a visit, could use some love? Is there someone you know that's hungry? You can bless them with some food or some money. Is there someone, a ministry God's been putting on your heart that, um, you've been just not responding to. I know one for me. Uh, I, I was, pre I've been, you know, the Lord's been dealing with me this as I was going to start a neighborhood Bible study. And that's where I started teaching Bible studies was a neighborhood Bible study. Um, my neighbor started it and then I ended up taking it over. And that was when Shannon was like three and I've been doing a Bible study ever since. And um, a neighborhood Bible study because we have some seniors in our neighborhood, elderly, that would love it and I and she even mentioned it um, Marianne to me and 
So that's what gave me the seed, but I haven't done it. So I'm going to do it. Yeah, Boone, Marianne Boone, she lives here again. Um, I have a neighbor right across the street who's like almost 80. No. And I never see her. She's in her house all the time. So that's, you know, that's not right of me. <laughs> And so, I want, so what is it in your life? Maybe the Lord is, you just feel this tug of something. Something simple. Write a letter to someone. Support a, a, a child. Uh, help someone. You know, um, I was listening to, oh, I think it was Keith Moore's wife, who I've never really listened to before. And it was so good. She's really hardcore. But she was saying that when her and Keith got married, their marriage was a mess. And they almost didn't make it. But what did they do? She found somebody. They found somebody whose marriage was bad or worse than theirs. <laughs> I'm serious. And they got together and started this learn about this together and studying about marriage and the word and teaching and sharing. And her marriage, their marriage was healed through that, and so was the other person's. Instead of waiting till you're all fixed, isn't that awesome? And if you know some, if your kids are a mess, find somebody whose kids are a mess too and get together and yeah. pray and say, what do we do? Right. And study and learn and start to minister to that person or someone that maybe is just a little bit or even the same boat as you. Yeah. They're so, and I thought, that is so powerful because every time John and I, whenever we teach, you grow, you grow, you learn, you, you grow, you teach marriage classes, you get better and stronger, amen? Fortunately, our marriage wasn't a mess, but it got better. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was great. So, you know, there's so many simple things. There's lonely people, simple things we can do, like John was saying, when he sits down and just talks to a homeless person. Oh. Find to find their story and share the Lord with them a little bit. We need to get out there like Jesus did and minister. Take people into your home, led by the Lord, whatever, you know, the Lord shows you. You know, I know you guys have Bristol in your home, and that's a blessing for her. But, you know, open your doors. Feed people. There's Jesus went about doing good and destroying the works of the devil. Right. And that's what we're to do. And we have that same power within us, that same power that raised Jesus, dead body from the grave, lives in us. Right. And is able to give life and health to our mortal bodies. Mm -hmm. And is able to use us like he used Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. We can minister and heal and pray for people in the hospitals or whatever. But what's your what what are you feeling called to do? Like Tabitha's going to start her everyday faith. And, and in a couple weeks, she's going to teach on Wednesday night a little seminar on her coaching. Yeah. People are stepping stepping up. Our new yoga class, some teaching. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. You know, what you do with, with your um, chaplain. chaplain, you're ministering to people, yeah. and you're getting out there. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, tell me, when you do those things, how does it make you feel? It's a uh, uh, feel that I, I'm, I need, I'm needed, you know, yeah. to do the Lord's work and to give that word encouragement. Amen. And to, um, you know, give them that comfort. Does it make you feel inside of you? Don't you feel oh, like yeah, just awesome? Time. Yeah. It's just like one of the best. I have all authority to go out and do this. <laughs> and that's the thing. You know? It will grow you. It grows yeah. us. It fulfills us spiritually because we're spiritually giving to others. Right. And you know what? We've got to stop being babies, and it's all about me, 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 grow, grow, and feed me, feed me. It's time to feed others, amen? Amen. Yeah. Which I know, I look at you all, you're doing that, you know, you have your your people you minister and pray for and talk to and call and write letters and the words that you send out, Diana. It's just all awesome, amen? And I'm proud of you guys. But that's what we're to do. Amen. Step up. Amen? Amen. Um, and it's never because we should never say we're too busy. You know? I mean, I know we have busy lives. But it should take a little time to write a note or make a phone call. That's all it takes. Amen? Amen. It doesn't have to be going to Africa and, um, you know, doing a missionary trip there. We have mission all around us. Amen. That's so, right. you know what? God's word is so clear in all that we're talking about. And we know how to build our faith. And we, and we need, and now we're sharing it with others and teaching them to grow their faith. And this is a tight group of ministers in here who are going out among them and ministering to others. And that's exciting. Amen. The Great Commission. Uh, amen. Amen.
Amen. And it's just one talking to one. Yeah. It's not too hard when you have so many of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else? Are you going to say something, anybody? John, word of wisdom from you. <laughs> um, this, may, this is, I think you'll understand what I'm going to say. When we went to, um, <laughs> took our first trip to Guatemala, mm -hmm. and I think we had 13 kids that we took down there. Teenagers, 14, 15 yeah. year olds or something. Yeah. <clears throat> And I remember not just saying to the kids, but to myself, because in the 13 days I got to preach 26 times. And it was just a, for me, it was wonderful. But I said to myself and I said to the kids, I said, you know, nobody down in Guatemala knows me. I can be whatever I want. And so I decided to be an evangelist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but the, the point is, That's good. you can you can do whatever you can do it here. You can yeah. you can do it anywhere. I mean, it was just the thought that I, you know, the, but while we're down there, yeah, I can share with anyone. Uh, nobody knows and me. No one's the same again. thing. I, I know that's a chicken. It's, a, it's kind of a cowardice thing that I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, and because here, uh, it, it, in your hometown. It sometimes can be a little more challenging, but I don't. I think for all of us, it's not really that challenging. But it's uh, good. It's true. Yeah, there's ways of just getting out and doing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anyways, good work. Yeah. Yes. Good work. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Good way to start the year. Huh? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord.